Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use a free tool called the FLV Metadata Injector to inject some additional metadata into your FLV files. So this is a PC only tool, but for those of you on Macs, I'm sure you have some access to a PC if you wanted to try this out. Okay, so to download it, you'll want to go to www.barocks.com, that's B-U-R-A-K-S dot com slash FLVMDI. And then here on this website, there's all types of documentation about the tool. And then particularly here, it goes through a list telling you all the different types of metadata that it will inject. Now some of these are the same as the Macromedia tools inject, but even the ones that are the same, this tool tends to do them more accurately. So I'm going to be going through uh, most of these once we get into Flash. But the one we're particularly going to be interested in here is this extra data property. And what this does is it allows you to embed a string, any type of string you want, inside of your FLV. And we're going to use it to store the title of our video so that we can display it once we're in Flash. So I'm going to scroll down to the download section. And there's actually a GUI that uh, is a separate download that you can get if you're not comfortable using the command line. But uh, for time's sake, I'm just going to show you the command line version. So this is the link you want, FLV MDI 2.0. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to save it to the desktop. And uh, it's just a zip file. So let's go over to the desktop now, and uh, I'll show you how to set up this tool. Okay, here we are on the desktop, and here's the zip file. I'm just going to extract the contents of this zip file right here to the desktop. And you can see uh, this is the file we want. This is the tool, flvmdi.exe. Okay, so I'm going to go to my C directory, and in my C directory, I have an FLV file, uh, just of some footage from Yosemite. And I'm going to want to inject some new metadata into this FLV file. So the easiest way to do it is just to drag that exe file into the same directory as the FLV. And now I'm going to want to go to the command prompt to run this tool. So I'm going to open up command prompt. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is get down to my C directory. Okay, now to run the tool, the first thing you need to type is obviously the name of the tool, which is flvmdi. And then the first parameter it expects is the FLV file that you want to inject this metadata into. So it's yosemite.flv. And the next parameter is uh, if you want it to be saved as another file, as a new file, you give it that uh, file name. So I'm going to say yosemite.meta.flv. Okay, now the next parameter, the third parameter, is where we actually give it the string. We tell it which string we want in that extra data property. And to do that, we put double quotes, then a forward slash E. Forward slash E is the flag telling the tool that this is the uh, string data for the extra data property. And then you just put in your string. So I'm going to say Yosemite in the springtime and then close the double quotes. Okay, so now when I run this, it's going to embed this string into this new FLV file. So let me go hit enter, and you can see it's very quick. Okay, so now if I go back to my C directory, I have that new FLV file with that new metadata injected into it. So now we're going to go over to Flash, and I'm going to tell you how to read all this metadata and how to populate a dynamic text box with that extra data property. Okay, here we are inside of Flash. I've started a new document and created an, a locked actions layer here. And then I have a video layer which contains my embedded video object. And if you're not sure about how to load external FLV files, then you should watch the video basic series where we go into quite a bit of depth about that topic. Okay, so I'm going to lock this layer and add a new layer. I'm just going to call it text. And I'm just going to grab the text tool and just throw in a dynamic text box down here. Okay, and I'm going to give this an instance name. I'm just going to call it the title because it's going to hold the title of our video. Okay, let me just center this up a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to go in and do the action script. 
So I'm going to highlight the first keyframe of the Actions layer and open the Actions panel. So I'm going to quickly write the code needed to uh, import an external FLV file, but I'm not really going to explain it uh, as, like I said, the Video Basic series is geared towards that. So first I'm going to create the net connection. Then we need to call the connect method and pass null to it. Then we create the net stream. And to the constructor of the net stream, we send the net connection we just created. Now we attach the video coming through the net stream to the embedded video object, which I've called video. Okay, and finally we need to uh, play our FLV file using the netstream play method. So ns.play and that new file I created is called Yosemite meta.flv. Flv. Okay, so this is enough right now to just get our FLV to play. So now we're going to call the on metadata event. We're going to set up that event. And in one of the earlier video basic series we had to do that in order to retrieve the duration property when we were building a video player so this code is going to be very similar so we're going to say ns now we need to use this bracket syntax uh, as I explained in the other tutorial uh, because this was kind of a, an undocumented feature and when you're using ActionScript 2 uh, for this event we need to use this bracket syntax so on meta data equals function. Now the on metadata sends an object to this function that contains all of the properties. So we need to define a parameter here to catch it. And I'm just going to call it info. Okay, so we're going to write a, a short little bit of code that's going to trace out all of the parameters that are in the metadata just so we can see them and, and read them. So in order to uh, iterate through an object's properties. Uh, a shorthand the way to do that is to use a for loop, a kind of a different kind of for loop. We say for var i in info. So what that means is it's going to go through every property inside of info and assign it to this variable i. Okay, so every time it does this we're going to want to trace something out. So we're going to say trace and now we're going to give it i, which is going to give us the name of the property. We're going to put a plus sign because we're going to concatenate these things together. Then in quotes, I'm going to put a colon. I want to put a colon and a space and close that little string. And then onto the end of that, we're going to say info. And then we're going to go to the i element of info. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to see all of the metadata that's in our FLV. So let's close this and close this. Now let's go out and test this so we can take a look at it. Okay, so there we see our video playing. And now our output window has got all of our metadata listed here. So I'm going to quickly go through some of these just to explain what they are. Uh, the data size is the size of the data tags inside of our FLV. The audio size, the size of the audio tags, and video size for video tags. The file size is the total file size of our FLV in bytes. And then here we see our extra data property has got that string that we entered from the command line. And we're going to be using this to fill that dynamic text box in a moment. Metadata date is when we created the metadata. Metadata creator is uh, the Manitou Group FLV Metadata Injector. That's the company that makes the tool. The last keyframe timestamp is a really important one and a really great one to have if you're building a player because uh, you really need to know where that last keyframe is in your video because if you're using a scrubber and you scrub beyond that last keyframe then uh, without this property it can be uh, can notice some funky behavior with the scrubber. So. And I'm not going to go through all of these. Here the uh, frame rate, 29.9. That's the NTSC frame rate. 
and this is just representative of my settings that I used in Sorensen to create the FLB. 128 uh, MP3, 1000 data rate, and then we have the height, the width of our movie, and the duration of our movie. So let's go back to Flash and populate that dynamic text box down here with the uh, extra data property. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, and the instance name for my text field is the title. And we're set, going to set the text property equal to info dot extra data. And this is the property that has our video title. So now when we go out and test this, we should see our dynamic text box uh, filled in. Okay, let me move this out of the way. And now we have a video with the title of the video underneath of it. So this is just a really handy way. If you just need a short string describing your video and you don't want to go through the hassle of using XML or hard coding it in your Flash movie, this is just a great way to, to embed some information directly in the FLV. Uh, and using the FLV metadata injector, not only are there extra properties and parameters that you can use, but even the ones that Flash creates, this tool will do a better job of creating them. Uh, they're more accurate. So I definitely recommend this tool. So thanks for watching.